Uh, you can sit at the front tables. <laughs> I can't, I really can't sing that far. I can't spread that far. <laughs> How are you today? Good. How do you like this setup? Kind of interesting, huh? You can put your drink down and you can, you know, take notes and stuff like that. We might, this might have to become a thing. <laughs> It's very good to see you this morning. We're so glad you're here. So glad you're healthy and well and you're here. <laughs> let's, just, uh, uh, let's just start this morning with a word of prayer. Father God, we just come before you and just want to quiet our hearts. We know that uh, we live in a world of noise. And it's hard sometimes to... Just walk away and listen to your, to your voice and commune, commune with you and realize how much we have in you as our Father. God, we just, uh, we're just so grateful that you love us and that we have a, a perfect God, an omniscient God who sees all, knows all, and guides all. And uh, that we can trust that. Um, help us, Lord, to want to share that with others. We thank you and we ask you to be with us and in, in, um, to have your presence in our midst today. Amen. Okay. It's Father's Day. So we just have a little something we want to show you. We hope the kids will enjoy this. No matter how old we are, we always remember what our dads say and do. My dad is more like Jesus than your dad. Nuh-uh. My dad doesn't let anybody eat any food until we pray for it. My dad prays for one minute every day. You know what? Our church has pancakes. This is what my sister and mom use for their blush. My dad says that mean kids never know what they're talking about. Because their parents don't know what they're talking about either. My dad says to punch meanies in the face. Then my mom says, don't ever do that. And my dad goes to time out. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's beard is itchy whenever he kisses me. My dad takes me to church so we could learn to be just like Jesus. My daddy prays for me. Then he makes me stop talking and go to bed. Then I get a flashlight and read my comic book. That's a sin. He's sinning. No, I'm not. Sinner. No, I'm not. R2, R2, R2. My dad said that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. My dad never stays mad at me. My dad taught me to forgive, because Jesus forgives us every time we ask. I want a mohawk. I wish I had hair. It's OK. Your hair will probably grow back. Thanks for being our dads for all our lives. You know, that's, <laughs> that's supposed to be funny, but I know a few adults who act like that. <laughs> oh, let's, uh, let's uh, before we start our time of worship and singing, I just want to tell you a couple of quick announcements. Uh, we have, uh, next Sunday will be uh, Houston, I mean Austin's, I call him Houston. <laughs> okay, this is Caleb's next, uh, uh, next Sunday is his last Sunday with us officially. He may be back at time, from time to time, but it just officially it'll be last Sunday. So we're going to do something fun uh, after church, and uh, the, all the details are in the e-news, and on, uh, they will be on Church Center once we uh, get them on there. We just have to make sure whether we're going to be inside or outside, but we're planning on outside. It looks, the weather looks good for right now. Um, also, we, how many of you actually use Church Center? 
you might have to lift your hands a little higher. Okay, so I know we've told you about this before. Church Center is an app that you can download to your smartphone. And when you click on it, you can go right to Sunrise Church's information. You can give. You can uh, look at what small groups are available. You can look at what events are going on. You can sign up for things. So we are trying, and you can also check in. And that's really important because we can, this way we can know that you were here. Uh, and especially during this time of this whole COVID thing, it's, it's nice for us to be able to know that you have been here. So why don't um, we have Jana? Jana, want you to stand up here just to, or wave, okay. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass her. Jana is here because she is like our guru for these things. And she will help you download that app to your phone and kind of go over it with you today. She'll be out in the lobby afterwards. So we're really highly encouraging people to take the time to download that app and to check in, let us know you were here, and get all the information. And I think you're going to find it's such a simple way to let us know what's going on and for for you to see what's going on. So um, I think that's it for the moment. Um, it's, uh, It's a wonderful day in the Lord, is it not? Aren't you happy just to be able to be here with each other? You look wonderful. Let's all sing. You're welcome to stand if you want to. I know it's not as easy with the tables, but you're welcome to stand. And we're going to begin our song of uh, our time of singing. I just my brain is just not working this morning, is it? <laughs> Hold that, don't hold that. 
praise his name this morning. Oh, he is so good to us. That's what we're focusing on today, his love, his grace, and his goodness. Let's sing about the goodness of his grace. Grace on top of grace More than I've asked for More than I'm worth Grace on top of grace How sweet the sound What's lost now found Heaven came down And grace rescued me for that, man. I tell you what, he is so good to us. Oh. 
of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so. darkest night you are close like no other oh I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God sing it out doesn't feel like it all the time. It doesn't feel like it some days. 
so many things happen in all of our lives that we just wonder why. Why us? Why this? Why now? But when we know your character and we know who you are, that you cannot be anything less than good to us, that you cannot cannot wish harm upon us, but that everything that happens passes through your hands and you promise to make good of it because you are good. And we praise you for that this morning and we thank you, God, for taking care of us every day, every moment, for talking to us, speaking to our hearts, helping us learn to listen and to have communion and relationship with you. God, we are so, so thankful. We praise you today, God. We just praise you with all of our hearts. Thank you for being a good, good father to us and an example. We love you, and we give you this morning in your name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I'm going to have Pastor Aldine come up, and we're going to do, uh, no, it's not, yeah, I got it for you. Whenever there's a transition like this, and uh, my my family is transitioning to, to Florida, and they, uh, Aldine's family are here already, but they're transitioning into leadership, um, Whenever there's those transitions, there's tons of questions. And so we, we wanted to uh, address not necessarily the, the logistical questions as much as just the, the like, who are you questions. Um, because whenever there's somebody new that comes in, you're like, what, what is happening right now? Um, so we wanted to have a little bit of a time where we could um, be a little more uh, conversational. So if you would just forget that they're here and just talk to me. Yeah. Just the little um, okay. There we go. Just, just like you would. <laughs> just gaze into my eyes uh, with meaning. Is that how you got Mallory in the first place? <laughs> that, the that was of part Mallory. of it. It was part of it. Okay. It was the charm. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to ask him some questions. If you have questions, we would love for you to reach out during this time. And, uh, and we would love to answer, answer those questions. But um, right now, it's not about your questions. It's about mine. So keep them to yourself, you know, keep them to yourself. All right, so I'm going to do a couple rapid fire questions. There you go, sir. And these are like one phrase answers, and that's it. After that, cut off. No explanations. And then we'll go into more depth. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you warm up before this or anything, vocally? (laughs) I didn't know. Anne is looking at me right now. Okay. (laughs) All right. Okay. Uh, How many kids do you have? I have three kids. They're at the back. So if you heard, uh, okay. There you yep. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Names and ages. Eliezer is five. Gabriel is three. And then by July, Silas will be one. Great. Don't judge me. <laughs> five, three, and one. Uh, how long have you been married? Eight years in December. Nice. Boom. I got it right. right off. My wife says. <laughs> What's your wife's name? Jessica Jane Reed is the whole name. Uh, Pablo, of course. Pablo. <laughs> but you can call her Jessie. Jesse, great. Uh, all right. So, what is your favorite sport? Basketball. Basketball. Favorite song? Song? I don't know. Anything by Backstreet Boys? Nice. <laughs> that is so I much don't better care of an answer who than you I could have hoped for. Where you? Is this church? Oh okay. my gosh. Are you recording it? <laughs> Can you cut it? I'm gonna want a copy. Uh, favorite food? Oh, that's that's hard. Spaghetti. Spaghetti? Uh, Filipino spaghetti. Okay. Because it's sweet and sour. No explanation. Sweet, sweet and sour. All right. Mm. Uh, what's, what's one of your favorite scriptures? Oh, that would be cool. Galatians 2.20, because I want to be, cru- I'm crucified with Christ. Okay. Galatians awesome. 2.20. Uh, what's your favorite season? Winter, spring, fall, summer, that. When I came here, it's fall and winter. Sorry, guys, for those who win- who doesn't have winter. <laughs> uh, 
All right, favorite family activity? Walking in the woods, walking anywhere, okay. going to the zoo. So yeah, you can see relatives there. Do you so. have a favorite kid? A favorite kid? <laughs> I have no. <laughs> Do I have a favorite kid? <laughs> no, sorry. Right. So yeah, my wife's <laughs> like no. Okay, well we'll get <laughs> yeah. we'll get it out of short answers. I'm not as good of an interviewer as I Ooh. pictured in my mind. This is the spotlight um, makes me it's sweating here. <laughs> It's the hard questions. That's oh, what it is. Goodness. It's intense. Uh, okay, what's something that people mm. don't know about you uh, that you want them to know? Oh, yeah. Um, so if you're wondering what's my race, so I am <laughs> Fil yeah, I'm Filipino because a lot of times they thought I'm Spanish. So I start talking to them, Adios, Patria, Dorada, Rion del Sol, Querida. So I start speaking Spanish to them as well. But I'm Filipino. But um, my dad is um, one for, she had like, Spanish, and so pretty much I have uh, European blood in me, whether you believe it or not, there is. So, yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. What is, what's one of your best memories with Jesus? My best memory of Jesus was when I was 17. Any 17 years old here? Uh, I don't think there's like 17. So when I was 17, that was like when I recommitted my life to the Lord. And that is also when I answered the call to the full-time ministry. And, and so I think that's the best and I was like having bonfire because I need to get rid of all like the physical stuff that my ex-girlfriend has given me, you know. So I need to surrender everything, something like that. We don't have Facebook during that time, so we cannot just, you know, save all of those things. And so for me, that was the moment I was like, Lord God, absolute surrender. Everything is yours. If you call me to the ministry, I'll follow you. So mm -hmm. that's like 17, 18 years ago now. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, how old are you? Mm -hmm. I just turned 35. Okay. So. All right. He looks good, right? That's my waistline, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep it consistent. Oh, okay. When All I came right. here, it's like 29. <laughs> I, I don't like, doubt it, man. And then McDonald's came we into my life. We just pack it on. Yeah, <laughs> pack so, I it on. <laughs> so I rebuke McDonald's. You have... <laughs> I, I don't know. You have Julebee. I, that doesn't yeah. seem... You have that. Uh, okay. So what's one of the things that you're most excited about mm -hmm. in this coming season? I'm excited to, I, I like meeting new people. That's, that's one thing. That's why this pandemic kind of killed me being inside of the house most of the time. And so right now, like I'm back at YMCA Georgianson as one of the chaplains there. So I love being out, knowing people. I hope coffee shop eventually would open. And so that makes me more excited just to see, to see you guys again and to know your story. And I want to know your story, guys, too. Um, and so that... That brings excitement to me, just, just seeing people. At 4 a.m. today, I'm already awake. I'm having Zoom communication with people from Japan and in Philippines because I love people. <laughs> so that kind of feeds on me. And so, and just knowing people. So that's, that's the exciting part. Are you an early riser normally? Well, before, yes. Uh, but it's subjective right now. Having kids, you're going to be waking up like 11, 2, 4 a.m., and then 9. It depends. <laughs> So, yeah, you just but ignore, I prefer morning. You just ignore those noises, yeah. and they'll I, go away. I don't know. It's hard because they're going to touch you, man. <laughs> Boys are different, you know. The, the, the sound plus touch. Right. Like, wake up, daddy. Wake up, daddy. That, so, I don't know. <laughs> like grabbing your face. You're grabbing your morning. face. So that's, that's the difference. Saying between. happy Father's Day. Happy uh, Father's I, Day. I wish. <laughs> I wish they would say that, you know. Anyway, it's happy Father's Day, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Thank oh, you, you too. Okay, what's your favorite yes, memory with your dad? Oh, I love for, that. For Father's Day. I love that. So my transition, when I was in high school, graduating in high school, 16 years old, um, my, my life was kind of falling apart in a sense. And my dad noticed that on me. Hmm. And so what he did, my dad is a pastor, and he's leading a denomination, maybe 500, 600 churches. And so, and he, he admitted it, that he doesn't have really enough time for, for, for us. And so there was a month wherein uh, he took me with him together with his, you know, friends or co-pastors, co-ministers. So for the whole month, I was with my dad. Mm -hmm. I saw him preach. I saw him go to small and big churches and, and lead conferences. And, and whenever he had altar, altar call, I think most of the altar call, I'm there. <laughs> But that bonding, that bonding um, is, I think that was the thing that ignited my heart to love the ministry, mm. uh, to love uh, the church in general. Because like, don't get me wrong, my dad is hurt by the church. 
Are you following this? As a leader, my dad was hurt by the church, but I see my dad still loving the church. Yeah. He said, if, if, the, if Christ died for the church, who am I not to follow his steps? Yeah. And so I saw that first time on my dad. So instead of me rebelling on my dad for not giving me time and everything, but that 30 days I want, it's just still stuck on my mind. And I think that's the, the, the pivot, or pivot, how do you say it? Pivot, pivotal moment in my yeah. life yeah. Uh, to, to answer the call in ministry. So, that's awesome. Yeah. It's funny, any mm-hmm. relationship like that, it feels mm-hmm. like any relationship that you're in, yeah. you're being vulnerable with mm-hmm. the, the person or with the group. Yeah. That's what makes it a relationship. <laughs> That's why you get close to each other. That's why you get close to the church. But anytime you're vulnerable like that, mm-hmm. there's just pain involved, mm-hmm. right? I mean, anytime that you're, you're getting close to anyone or anything, there's pain that comes with it along with the, mm-hmm. the great joy uh, I, I just don't know that there's mm-hmm. any way to, to get around that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what mm-hmm. is, what's God been teaching you lately? Mm. I love that. I think for me, I don't know, may, may, many of you can relate with this. You, you love, like pretty much business is your identity. And, and you just want to run, 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 run. Uh, prior for me coming here, I've been serving in two churches. And, um, and so I just like, I'm doing, you know, kingdom work. And then I realized for the last 11 months, when I, when I was looking at my kids, I wasn't able to put them to bed. My first two kids, the five-year-old and three-year-old kid, I wasn't able to put them to bed because when I, whenever I go home, I'm just tired. And then I realized with my new kid right now, I have him for 11 months, and I'm putting the, you know, the two older kids now to bed, and I was like, dude. This is what I'm missing? Mm. And so it's like, there's no excuse. Even if you're doing kingdom work, not, you know, I said, I think it's Andy Stanley who said, it is not um, what you do that makes you successful. It's whom you raise. And so that, that hit me to the core. And I start to, to shift my mind uh, on my kids at, the, at this, you know, at those particular times. And, and pandemic, I think, kind of helped in a sense, you know. Kids are home, and then being the principal in the, in the house, I, I resigned in the first day. <laughs> so it's <was> like, <laughs> like uh, bring them back. Child yeah. care, please. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Mm. <laughs> That's why you were here from time to time. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I would text him and I said, can I go, can I go to you know, here just to, to do office work? And he's here. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing here? You're like, yeah, you know, Mallory, he's escaping too. So. Wow. That's like, is it manscaping? I, so, I don't know. So it's during, during the... Sorry for uh, the word. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's My vocabulary that. is that's it. limited. <laughs> it's it's limited vocabulary. That is, that's not what it is. <laughs> that's not what I want to say. It's like we're escaping. <laughs> okay. Man escaping, yes. Yeah. It sounds like landscaping. I, I don't know. <laughs> manscaping is something different. Google that later. I'm glad that we're not recording that's this. Not what Are that you is. recording this? <laughs> It's almost 10 minutes anyway, so... No, you're fine. Uh, you, did, you did really great. Um, get, get to know this guy over the, next, uh, over the next few weeks and a few months. He is so much fun to talk to. Has had so many experiences. His family is really awesome. The more time that you can spend with him, the more you'll love him. I, I know that that's true. Uh, every... don't have, they need an interpreter, though. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. It's just... <laughs> Don't get him too excited. If he gets too excited, just go, just slow it down for me. <laughs> just slow it down for me. Thank you um, for saying that because my wife reminded me. Right. Talk slow and loud right. and enunciate. Right. She reminded me that last week. Husbands, but, even though it's Father's Day, listen to her wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every day. That's good advice. Um, would, you, um, would you join me as we pray for Aldine and his family? Uh, God, we just bless you so much for this opportunity to work with such a great family. Uh, We thank you that you've brought he and his family here. We pray that you would bless them and that you would um, bind our hearts together in in the love of Christ and in uh, the love of people and the love of one another. Would you bind our hearts together? Um, And we just pray for a special blessing on him today on Father's Day that that you would remind him of the the things that uh, he needs to be a good father and that you'd remind him of moments where he's been a good father. Mm. We 
pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, give him a hand. All right, I'm going to need full range of motion, so I'm just going to move some stuff around real quick. I would love to. I, I have really considered doing at least part of a sermon on the hoverboard. Um, I haven't committed yet, though. <laughs> it feels like committing to my generation a little bit, and I, and I don't ascribe to being a millennial very often because I don't feel like one, um, but that is one, one of the things. I often walk my son um, in the stroller, but I don't walk because I don't want to. Look at me. I don't need exercise. I'm fine. So I get on the hoverboard, and I just scoot them around. And I'll tell you something. There's a lot of judgment when you see people, and they're like, what's wrong with you? You can judge all you want. I'm a genius. <laughs> all right? I'm winning right now. I'm winning. That's what that is. Uh, <laughs> That might be true, uh, but right now, I don't, I'm not worried about it. Uh, so he's, he'll ride his bike, and my wife doesn't, she doesn't have a board. So she was talking about chasing him, because he's on a bike, you can either ride a, a two-wheel bike next to him, which is not, he's not going to go fast enough for you to ride that two-wheel bike, or you can run on your feet. The perfect solution is a hoverboard, all right? <laughs> I have it figured out. Uh, so that makes those walks much, much more enjoyable. Uh, if you're interested, I can give you the brands of the hoverboards that are good. Uh, if you're not, that's fine. It's good to be with you on Father's Day. These are my Father's Day moments. Uh, I had no idea that I cared at all. Um, it's not my first Father's Day, but it's my first Father's Day as a father of someone who could actually talk and do stuff. Um, so <laughs> where the kid is real, maybe, and you probably wouldn't say it that way. Um, so my, my son comes up to me this morning, he goes, happy Father's Day. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about like being vulnerable in relationships, like you give somebody part of your heart and I have given him too much of mine. Uh, that should not wreck my life that he says happy Father's Day. I know it's a line, too. His mother told him it was Father's Day. He had no idea. <laughs> and I was still like, oh, my gosh, my heart, my precious heart. <laughs> <sighs> so it's good to be with you. I want to share um, something that is really uh, transforming the way that I think about faith. And, uh, man, it's so exciting. So I talked to you last week just very briefly about this new revelation that you cannot have mercy without, um, without there being a system of judgment and law, right? Did I talk to you about that? Do you remember? I was shouting. You were humming to yourself in your chair out there. I didn't know if you are listening to me. No, you remember. You remember. I trust that you remember. All right. So you can't have mercy without a system of justice. It's impossible. Because then people wouldn't be getting pardoned. It would just be anarchy, and periodically things go well for you. Right? Well, I've never thought of this before, but this is why God gave them the law that he gave them. Because if he didn't give them the law, there would be no system of justice. And then when Jesus showed up, it would be for nothing. Because you wouldn't even know that you're getting forgiven of anything. You wouldn't even know there's anything wrong. Come on, man. That's really good stuff. So what has blown my mind is without truth, which is what God bases the law on, there wouldn't be a just law. So the foundational, uh, the foundational thing that all of this sits on is God's truth, 
which is unmovable. God's truth is based on God's character. It's, uh, it's immovable. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's, he's never going to change. And so his truth and his justice never change. I love this about God. He doesn't play favorites. It, it doesn't matter what uh, socioeconomic status you are. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you make a lot of money or, or whether you don't, whether you're old or young. There's this, stay, there's this really consistent pattern of justice for him, which is so good. Because otherwise, it's based on his, like how you feel which is sort of how some of us run our houses. The justice system is based on the feeling of the day. Yeah? You have been there. You have been the judge, and uh, you have been the victim of that, I'm sure. Because we don't run on a consistent justice system, right? We should, we want to, but we don't. Which is why there are times, and I remember this as a kid, there were times where you got lit up by dad and you were like, I don't know what that was about. <laughs> I was being bad, but not that bad. <laughs> Be- because there's an emotional component there, and there's not for God. There's not. And so his justice is perfect, which is such good news. And there had to be justice so that there could be mercy and forgiveness and goodness. And so we sing these songs about God's goodness and about his mercy and about his forgiveness and about his grace and about his love. And we're kind of fixated right now. As a culture, as a, as a Christian culture. But I'll tell you, like, unless you at least glance at at judgment, you don't realize why you got mercy. Can I say that? Like, unless you look over at your brokenness and at your sin, it, it just feels like this, yeah, God, God's merciful to other people. Isn't that nice for them? No, he's, it's us. We're the ones. We're the ones that were devastatingly lost completely broken, and without hope. We're the ones who were completely blind with no ability to ever see again. Do you understand? Unless we look that, that fact, that truth in the eye, then mercy is for other people and not for us. the mercy ends up being this free gift for someone else, which isn't free. It costs Jesus everything. You know, when, when the Jewish people did the Passover ceremony, they would, they, each family would have a lamb that they would kill and eat for Passover every year. Each family would have a lamb that they, they killed and ate at, at Passover every year. That's when they celebrated God delivering them from Egypt into the promised land. Are you following me? Mostly yes? Great, great. He would have them get the lamb days before they would kill it. It was part of, it was part of the routine. Why? Have you ever seen a lamb and like been around it for a little while? Spend a half hour with a lamb. It's adorable. There is no way as a person that you are not going to bond with this lamb. There's no way, especially if it stays with you for three or four days. You're going to love it. You're going to probably name it, even if it's on accident. Because you're going to have to talk to the lamb. You're not just going to sit there and not have a conversation with it. <laughs> it's, it's just how we are. And even in a culture that, that didn't uh, have, we have a little bit of a weird relationship with animals. I don't know if you know that or not. 
if you travel outside of the United States and talk about how we talk about pets, they will throw up on you. Because we're weird. We're weird about pets. But even when you're not weird about pets, there's no way to hang out with a lamb for several days and not love it. That's on purpose. So that when it was killed and when it was eaten, you felt it. You felt the weight of not someone's sin, your sin. Your sin cost this lamb its life. Not someone's sin, your sin. Now, here was the problem with, with those sacrifices. Those sacrifices were made by people who were broken. And they were made with lambs that were supposed to be unblemished, so as perfect as they could be, but everything has a little bit of a blemish, yeah? What Jesus did was he came and was the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. Not for someone's sin, for yours. Not because you're okay. Not because you're a good person. And that's how we talk in our culture. When we talk about our coworkers, when we talk about our family, when we talk about our friends, we say, they're okay. You know what? They're all right. It's not true. They're not okay. They're not all right. And, and this is like the easiest time ever to, to make this statement because we just went through COVID and now have, have race relations that these are like real problems that are happening, Right? There are real problems that are happening. We're not all right. Okay? Like, we're, we're not all right. And it takes looking at brokenness and calling it, and calling it brokenness. Like, this is not okay. And I don't want to talk any more about it because we have enough people. Everybody's got different opinions on what the brokenness is. Just say that it's broken. For this morning, just say that it's broken. In your own home, you can say whatever you want. But for this moment, we'll, we'll just go, look, it's, it's not okay. We are not okay. It's not someone's, it's ours. And if we do that, we can accept Jesus as our Passover lamb and as our sacrifice. And then... The mercy and the grace and the goodness and the love get to be ours. But if not, they're just out there somewhere and we don't get them. Can I tell you something? I meet meet Christians all the time that do not feel saved at all. It's not just that they don't look like it. They don't, but that's not what I'm talking about. They don't feel like it. There's no peace in their heart. Why is that? I think it's because there's general grace and mercy over them, not specific. I think it's someone's sin God's forgiven, not theirs. I think it's a big part of it. I think it's a big part. Now, Jesus came for the poor, he came for the oppressed, he came for the blind, he came for the broken. You can come in this building every Sunday for the rest of forever and say, he came for someone else. Because that's those people, and I'm good. You can do that. Or you can say, Those are all me. I am the broken. I am the blind. When Jesus heals a blind man, there are are angry religious people around him. Because Jesus is talking about he came to open the eyes of the blind. And they go, well, we're, what? Is he saying that we're blind? Because we're not blind. And he goes, you know, if you would say 
that you're blind, I would open your eyes. But because you've said you see, your blindness remains. And so you get to decide whether his grace and mercy are for you or whether they're just for people. I don't think in, in almost all Christian circles, I don't think it's in dispute whether God has mercy and grace and, and, and whether he has love for people. I don't think that's a, in dispute. It's just not for them. God loves everyone. But then you go, you? Does he look at you and go, I love you? And they go, no. <laughs> he doesn't. Does he look at you and say, I am pleased with you. I am satisfied with you. I love you. You're pulling back on me a little bit. That first part was fine, wasn't it? The forgiven part, that's fine. Don't tell me he loves me. This is the problem. Called to represent him. Called to tell people about him. Who are you, who are you representing? What are you going to tell him? God loves everybody. Does he love you? Well, no. But everybody else he does. Do you see the lack of consistency? Not in the general Christian message, in your Christian message. Do you see the lack of consistency? I used to think that Christians didn't pray because they were lazy. I think it's because they're afraid to be alone with him. Speaking of Father's Day, like this guy's going to whack me, man. I don't want to be around him. Let's let pastor talk to him. We'll talk to pastor and that'll be good enough. You hear what I'm saying? It won't stand. It won't last. You will never get the life that Jesus promised you with that mentality. Now, I want to read you these verses. This is Jesus quoting scripture. He's in Luke 4. I don't know how many of you are going to look at this or not. Write it down. Act like you're writing right now. That'll help me. You don't have to actually write. Just... Luke 4, yeah. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Just, you can totally placate me right now. I don't, I don't mind, but I do want you to do that. <laughs> Luke 4, 18 and 19. Now, he was in Nazareth, which is where... Uh, He was from, it's where he grew up, where he had been brought up. And on a Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, unrolling it. He found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled it back up, and he sat down. Now, that was the Messiah's mandate, but that is the word of the Lord for you today. That if you have been bound up in any way, there is freedom for you. There is forgiveness for you. There is mercy for you. But you have to call what is broken, broken. Not someone's, yours. If you want forgiven, you have to say that you've been wrong. If you want mercy, you have to need it. It's not general mercy anymore. Specific. 
So I want to take time this morning and have you examine your hearts. Just think about it. Because what he has for you is all the things that he promised. That your eyes will be open. That you'll no longer be oppressed. That you'll be set free. That you'll be forgiven. That you'll be in right relationship with God. So I'm going to pray for you. And then we're going to worship a little bit. And then I'll come back up afterwards. All right? God, we're so grateful for your mercy, for your truth, for your righteousness, for your love. You never, never stop loving us. And I ask this morning that we would look you in the eye and accept the love that you have been offering us. That we'd accept the forgiveness that you're offering us. That we'd accept the mercy that you're offering us. That we would be forgiven. We bless you. Light up our hearts this morning. Show us the places that need your touch. May we surrender those places to you. We ask in Jesus' name.
As we go on during this week, that we would have uh, your ways in mind, that we would remember uh, that we're forgiven, that we would practice being forgiven, that we would practice being loved, but that this wouldn't be a moment. We'd practice so that it would become a lifestyle, that we might live in the freedom and the triumph that you paid for. And leave none of your sacrifice behind. That we would get your full value, your full worth. We pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Um, if, if you're gonna mingle, we're gonna mingle in the parking lot. Um, but... I, I would really encourage you, if, if uh, you have a second and you want to figure out the app, like today's a really great day. Uh, Jana will be out there to help. Um, but I want you to know something. Like this is, this is a personal thing for me. Like we've stopped doing um, bulletins, and, and it, will save us a lot. it will save us a lot of money that we can use for, well, anything else, really, anything else at all. Um, and going to the app to me isn't really this like I'll like commit to technology as much as it's like commit to saving this money so that it can be used for ministry. Um, so if if you would uh, take a look at that app, that that would just be a really great place to start. Um, so anyway, that's my spiel. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Really glad I got to be with you. Looking forward to next week. We'll see you then. Hey, and yet I'm sorry to add something, but in case you did fill out the survey that was on the table, that's just the one from the app, the one that we've been sending out an email. Uh, if you were at any of the cottage meetings where we talked to Aldine and, and Caleb and Fred, this is something that they would just like to have a little bit of input on. So if you could take a minute and fill it out. If you haven't, you could just leave it lay on the table. We'll pick it up later. Uh, the family registration card, too. If you're new today, we'd love to have, uh, we'd love to know that you were here. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.